you feeling this morning? Hmm? It's been a rough, rough morning. You hear that noise there? It's been plaguing us all night long. <laughs> you don't get those kinds of sounds in an RV, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> I'm so... I'm so tired. I know we can do this because we've done stuff like this before, but I'm just like, I feel like I get in that bed and I've just gone. That's someone turning on the water in another hall. We are world towning. Jessica, Will, Avalon, and Largo. Our family has been traveling the world since 2014 until COVID hit. Rather than return to the US, we decided to buy a boat and learn to sail in France. Hit the subscribe button and join us every Friday when we share our stories as a liveaboard family while experiencing cultures from around the world. We learn in a wide variety of ways. Some learn by watching, others by listening, and yet another group who needs to verbally repeat what they just saw. Step three is slipping off the stern. Mm -hmm. Step four is giving the starboard a little bit of gas. In our family, all four of us seem to fall into a different category. We are all physical or kinesthetic learners, which means that we learn by doing. Unfortunately, I think at this point, we have to come to a pretty strong conclusion that we're in it for the the art of it, not for the fish of it. Over the last six years, as we have been traveling, we have had our fair share of opportunities to jump right in and learn about traditions and cultures from locals around the world. Oh, you should be enjoying this way too much. <laughs> we are now being thrown headfirst into yet another learning opportunity as we continue our life-changing sailing lessons. But this experience is a little bit different. You see, if you mess up a step in a craft, you end up with maybe an ugly craft. If no one laughs, then you'll be okay. Well, people still laugh with me, not at me. In our current situation, forgetting a step can lead to far worse. I'm not scared out here today. I don't think I'm going to be you know, worrying or freaked out every day on the boat. But it is one of those things where I feel like I have absolutely no control over. And I am a little bit of a control freak. But let's not think about the negative. Join us today as we continue on our sailing lessons and get ourselves ready to embark as a family on the next chapter of our lives at sea. Good mor- I'm not very good at holding this thing. Let's see if we can prop it someplace. Good morning, everyone, from a very cold, very nasty, very ugly, and snowy southern France. It never snows in the south of France, and we happen to be taking our day skipper lessons in the south of France, and it's snowing. It's so, it's so snowing here. Listen, <laughs> taking out the trash is usually the highlight of my days because it gets me a chance to go outside. I'm looking over there. It's like super far away, the trash bin. Let's just take it back to our marina. I do. <laughs> so I here, want to sit around here with trash. So here's the thing, guys. You know, you all know, and I'm sure we'll put a link in there someplace that we took our competent crew training oh in gosh. the worst storm Malta's had in 30 years, and now we're actually going to be sailing today for about four hours in snow. I don't know if it's going to last it's or not. It's got to warm up. There's no way. I don't know. It's pretty cold. I'm. I am the um, skipper today. And so I'm going to run a tight ship and we're going to get there as fast as possible and safe, of I'm course. I'm so glad we have electricity right now. No, they did. <laughs> oh my gosh, we almost slept without electricity last night. We almost slept without night. electricity <gasps> last night. And it, to have, without having heat, it, it would be... Oh my gosh, yes. It'd be tragic. So we're not complaining, we're just telling you that... <laughs> <laughs> that whatever Will and I do, it seems like the odds are always against us and there's some sort of a test like how bad do you really, really want this? It's cold and it's nasty and you know, it's it's hard. It is what it is, we but we just, will get there. We should and just try the outdoor shower and just be done. And, and she <laughs> Would you guys want to see that? Welcome yeah. to World Town AC. <laughs> now our boat, yes, does have hull heat. However, it is part of the diesel system and it's in need of service, which is scheduled for March. But we cannot wait for things to get more pleasant. So the question I have for you is this. So what would you be willing to do to accomplish a goal? Would you come out and sail in the coldest month in the south of France during snow and wind and nastiness? Would you do it, guys? Or would you find, or would you at some point just say, forget it, I'm not doing it? The, the interesting part about being in here nowadays is that because we're sharing a space, we, we get to sort of... Avalon's <laughs> locked her door at night. Here we go. Good morning, Avalon. What's going on? 
Did you hear all the wonderful sounds last night of the, of the ropes creaking? Did it snow? It's snowing right now. What? It's snowing right now. Yeah. It's big time snowing outside. Cool. Do you want to make a snowman? I know it's not snowing that much. <laughs> wow, we're bringing out the big stuff today, huh, Little? We are right off the shelf. We are, it's really cold outside. And I don't want to mess around today with getting cold to the bone. And if we're going to be in the south of France sailing for the next couple months, we got to get used to sounding like we're just like walking through a plastic aisle <laughs> everywhere we go. We're getting the heavy duty gear on. Those look pretty cute on you. They are. They're not they're not the super heavy duty stuff, but we'll graduate onto there. They're the medium heavy duty stuff. Exactly. I've been wearing this every single day since we got out. I don't know how we survived. How many layers do you have on today? Three here, two here. Jacket, snow pants. When was the last time you saw your skin? Your last shower? I've only seen my hands and my face for days. <laughs> How do you feel about mom being skipper today? Think she can do it? Concerned. Concerned? <laughs> so today's activity of the day, activity as far as what we're doing for our lessons, is we are taking control of the boat 100% for us, which means that our instructor is going to watch us observantly and how does that sound? Okay, we're gonna, he's gonna watch us observing, but we are gonna basically be in charge of the entire passage, meaning from launching from the dock to making our coordinates, making our, our passage plan, and then eventually getting back to our home port um, in a week or less. Basically, we're gonna be on our own. And so, which means that if we can't manage this as a family 100% on our own, we got one second. We gotta have to stick around for a few more days, or you just may not pass us, but. I'm, I'm not I'm not thinking that's gonna happen. Or this one too? So yes, I am in charge of today's passage. Avalon and Will already had their turn and I was left for last. Unfortunately, Largo is under 16, so he can't get certified, but he's taking part in everything else. Three hours and 10 minutes. It's reading about 17 knots. Um, there's no watch system. We have fuel, we have water. To be honest, and I'm sure you all noticed, I am super nervous. You see, living full-time in the RV had its challenges, but it was just a bigger size car. Keep an eye out. I drew a picture. Um, yes, because we're gonna need to, our, our um, plan has us going right into it, so we're gonna have to just move around it when we get near it. Driving a boat and figuring out a passage plan is a totally foreign concept. In my mind, I just have to keep saying, you got this, you got this. Until we get to that? Yeah. Is it five minutes, two hours? Round two, little, I have to I have to look at the chart to see exactly where it is between those yeah. two waypoints, but, but after two hours. Towards that sort of time, then you can sort of check and say to your crew, Okay. in the next 15, 20 minutes or so, we're going to be getting close to this cardinal mark please look out for it, let me know when you see it. Okay. But there's no point in telling us, telling now. them things now <laughs> that they're gonna forget. Yes, that makes sense. We'll never forget you. Well, thank you guys, you're a great crew. I think in this situation, yes, I am skipper, but if you see me doing something that you know is wrong, we are also a family and we're gonna need to do this together. Um, so I think we let each other know in this, in this situation, okay? It's, all, it's also part of being a competent crew to spot things that need sorting out, right. whether it's a rope that needs adjusting or something's going wrong, you know, what's that boy doing over there that we haven't accounted for, that sort of thing. I see something wrong. What's wrong? The lack of a chocolate fountain on this boat. The lack of a what? Chocolate fountain. A chocolate fountain. I thought you said something about like, I'm chucking. Did anyone take seasick? <laughs> we got some today? really smart ass crew. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we are ready to go. So the plan to get out of here is I'm going to, and I already forgot. Unhook the stern and let us drift out a bit, right? Is that what we say? Unhook the stern and the spring line. You're going to rotate the boat using the engines to bring the stern out. Okay. Bear in mind, you've got boats fairly close over there. Right. Once you've got the stern out clear of that, we can slowly start going ahead 
going astern, sorry, slip the bow line and bring the bow out with okay. the opposite. With the opposite. But what with you the don't want to do is twist the boat back in towards him. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, you know, once you've got the stern out, you can just go straight back unless right. you need to adjust it at all. Okay. All right. Do you guys, did you guys all get that? Yes. So, Avalon, I'm going to put you on roving fender. Um, Largo, I'm going to put you back here on the, on the rope. Okay. Right. So that rope's off now, so now just watch what happens as the wind blows, they're blowing backwards a little bit, but the bow line's holding it. I'm not going to lie, getting out of the marina in this location was not the easiest thing to accomplish. It was a really tight space. Okay, so once he slips that one, I'm going to go You're going to go stern with, stern with the pole yep. and ahead with the Ready? starboard. Oh, now I'm going too much. But with a little patience, and of course a pro next to me, we were able to get out. Slow ahead with the stop, just until it clicks. Right, neutral, neutral. Watch the front of your boat, you don't want to go forwards. So, you're clear now, you can get your fenders and ropes okay. all put away. Yep, you can clear up the fenders and the ropes. Largo, go get fenders and ropes, please. Yeah, like I say, if someone's going to fall overboard, I'd much rather they did it in here right. than out there. Yeah. You know, but you know, when it's cold like this, you need to be able to get people out of the water or you know, they can swim to the rocks and climb out very easily. Now just put them both into slow ahead and then steer with the wheel. So go astern with the right engine. Rotate us into the wind. What's the word, Skip? Nothing yet. <laughs> I'm just getting us around these rocks and getting head to wind, and then we'll put up the main. Now, as we were doing this all alone with a chaperone, this was our chance to either shine or learn a few more lessons. Let's just say that we did okay enough. Raise the main sail. You, hang on. Oh. Are you ready? Oh, are you ready? ready. No, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready, yeah. Look, look at the boat. You need to let the main sheet out. Oh, okay. They, they don't, when I say raise the main, I have to tell them to let the main sheet out. Oh, so and yes, just like a trusty autopilot, Largo and I were fast in the lines and knew exactly what to do. The thought that we are transforming into okay, a cruising so family I makes me so excited. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Good. Oh. It is 100% snowing out here. It's not snowing that bad, and we're in about like 20 knots of wind. So it's it's a matter of getting out here and testing our cold weather sailing gear. It's I never thought that our sailing lessons would be a lesson like in every single aspect of sailing. The only thing we don't have is tides. So the only thing that we really can't practice as much as we want to are tidal currents because here in the Med it, it's maybe high low tide variance is like a foot and a half. So you know, there's nothing we can do. We can't test it, we can't tr train it. It's life. Uh, besides that, this is this is quite nice. The boat sails like a charm. I never thought that, um, that this would be our life. I'm pretty, I'm pretty psyched about it. That's nice, 7.5. I'm supposed to be going this one, not this one, right? Because it's not calibrated. So I'm not knowing which one to trust because they're all giving me different. This is saying 245, this is saying 260, this is saying 249. So they're not calibrated, but Brad had said to follow this one. And it, the idea is that they will all be working in conjunction, right? Once we- Probably, you may get the auto helm reading the same. That would be the last thing I would worry about. Okay. 
the nicest one to get working is your main steering compass again that's down to what we said right at the start about checking your compass that's bearings one, right? and you may or may not need to adjust that compass because okay. on some bearings it's absolutely spot on um, other bearings it's not I mean it's reading now 285 so it's it's about 10 degrees over what if I open my soul here I stand by myself on my own what if I lose all control So we're currently at 15 knots of wind and we're getting about five, six knots with the boat. We're at 275 degrees. We've got about two hours before we change waypoints. Um, it's pretty cold. The wind isn't coming at us, which is nice. Yesterday it was just blasting on us. And right now I'm just practicing not to fixate on the compasses for my direction, but to look at the boat and feel the boat and fix a point and kind of adjust that way um, so that I'm a little more natural at it, not like the stiff person just standing here fixating, because I'm definitely going to get seasick if I'm standing fixating on the, um, what are those called? All the, the instruments. This is hard. Alan, how's your guacamole in the morning? I changed my mind about wanting to sail someplace cold. What? The avocados are please? Um, no, because this is miserable. Nothing to do with the avocados. I promise one day Evelyn will be in warm weather. Are you warm at all or are you no. just freezing? Cold. I'm gonna go make some tea. I'll have some tea too, please. I'll take an old gray. As far as the sailing conditions were concerned, we could not have asked for better. Sure, it was cold and cloudy. Okay, maybe we could ask for a little better. But the sea was flat, so we just enjoyed the ride. Today we are on. I don't know what day, day six or seven, almost at a week of sailing lessons. And I'm feeling a bit more confident. And plus there's four of us. So everyone kind of has skills in certain areas and we kind of all come together as maybe one complete sailor. <laughs> We're definitely gonna have to come out and practice. The plan is twice a week between work and school, maybe more. And I think we'll get where we need to be. I'm definitely not scared. I'm not scared out here at all in the ocean. Um, I'm not scared of our ability, but I definitely feel like there's still more of a learning curve for us. However, I also feel that we can get out, go in the marina, play around, and even probably take maybe a four or five day passage, a four or five day, oh my God, not four or five day, four or five hour passage when the weather is really nice to get out and practice some more. But for sake of talking about learning to sail, um, for me, it's the fear of the unknown. And I'm finding that the more knowledge I gain in this area, um, doing the competent crew in Malta, now doing the day skipper, and our instructor is going to come back again in six weeks to work on some more things with us. I'm feeling much more confident and comfortable out here compared to where I was, say, a week ago or even two weeks ago when Will was talking with someone about crossing the Atlantic and I was like, hell no, never doing it. And now we're talking about doing it in, in, in about 11 months. And I, I can see if we keep progressing at this level that I can see that actually happening and us getting there. There clearly is a long way to go. I still have some fears to fight. But what I have learned about fear is that anything that I have done, Will and I have done together, we've done as a family, that has had a dose of fear and we've kind of broken it down and evaluated and, and sought out ways to kind of overcome those fears has turned out to be you know, in the top five or 10 decisions that we've made for our life and our lifestyle. And I hope one day I'm sitting on this boat like this, talking to all of you in a bikini <laughs> with my hair flapping in the wind saying, you remember back when we were, when we were taking our sailing lessons in snow and rain and hail in France and in Malta. So instead of actually having a, a clamp system for our, our stove, which we're looking to get, we've been able to figure out that if we use this tray that we have for our oven, and I sort of fix it upon there, it will keep our pot here from like swaying too much if we get into a bit of a rough patch. So right now we've got 
are jerry rigged um keeping things from swaying off and sort of messing things up too too bad system we're looking to get a system to sort of hold everything together but until then we just sort of do what we have to do because i don't want to stand here like this we're not going to get back in time for lunch so we got to make lunch underway the great part about having an instructor with us is that Largo's up at the helm and he's keeping Largo company. So we get a chance to actually make lunch at this point. We're going to make my famous, my not so famous, but my buffalo pasta. It's basically bow tie with like wing sauce and, and, and a whole bunch of butter. It's going to be really good. And on a boat, it's going to keep us nice and warm and toasty. You're taking him into our secret space. We have a a cool storage which around here nowadays it's almost like another refrigerator because the water's so cold i feel like you guys are looking into our like underwear drawer looking in this and we keep all the things here that we feel like are doesn't don't have to be refrigerated but we would like to sort of remain chilled and one of the things that we're doing for our buffalo sauce is one of the things that are hard to get around here is oh i gotta be careful not to break everything there's a lot of glass in here like that check this out we have frank's red hot sauce one of the first things that we bought in the boat there's a lot of recipes that we like to have with this and it's hard to get in europe so when we saw this available we just totally jumped on it um we're hoping that this will last us a couple months and then basically while that's all going oh jeez. okay uh whoa i hate to run out of gas at this point um to get the sauce, it's basically mostly like any buffalo sauce. The milder you want it, the more butter it's got to be. And in this case, we have a very mild-ish sort of appetite within the family. And so we're just putting in a ton of butter. It's kind of open the ways to put in this much butter of like the really good French stuff that we can get. But you know what? This is going to be really good buffalo sauce. So you get the really good butter that goes with it. You can almost eat this stuff like cheese. I'm not going to, but it's really good. A little more than two ta teaspoon, tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Listen, we're not, we don't have a halfway kitchen in this place. And then the kiss of love on here is the Frank's red hot sauce. You essentially want to put in like a quarter cup, depending on, once again, your appetite. That might have been a little more than a quarter cup. And just let it simmer. Release the main, please, Largo. Down on it. You can do it, buddy. The day so far was highs and lows. Our exit was a bit of a mess, but the sail was on point. We hit our marks and landed back at home on schedule. Now, I was determined to stick the landing and get us back on the dock without incident. Avalon, what do we have done for lines? The line is ready, that's it. Okay. Okay, so we're now at the point where I'm roving fender. Okay, so now we're at the point where we have gotten back into our marina. We are ready to go, and at this point, it's it's the protecting the boat on on the parking, which I think is, is the biggest challenge that we're facing so far. It is said that docking is one of the most stressful parts of cruising, and with everyone watching, you can really feel the pressure. Still going backwards. Now you can go first forward just to stop the boat, and then you're a really good parallel parker. You should be able to do this in two seconds. No pressure. Okay, so. Right hand engine. Should I go like this? Right hand engine forwards. And don't forget you're going to be using the wheel now. Yep. To steer you in. And even though I had my emotional support system next to me, it was all combined efforts that led to us getting back safe. Ready to step ashore, Largo? That's enough. That's enough. You don't what? Need to go. Get ready. Step ashore. And then yeah. take a turn round. I'm just gonna say a big oh my god we actually did it from start to finish as a family as much as we know that we had accomplished a huge feat we also knew that there was still a ton more to learn 
So we've got a bow line on as well. You good? Good. I'm gonna be honest, I think I'm gonna be better at this than you will, because I'm gonna be more aggressive of getting closer to the dock. Well, as long as you have someone there measuring it up for you, you're okay. I would feel much better if you were measuring it. So if something goes wrong, you could just be like, well, you didn't, you didn't give me the right measurement. Well, you know. <laughs> because if I'm over there, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, I'm to blame because I'm right there. So I'm par I'm parking lady. For now. <laughs> and with that, we can officially say that we are beginner sailors because the reality of it is, is that brad is going to leave us one day and we're going to want to go out on our own and we're going to need to be able to do this on our own so got to start somewhere right i'm pretty psyched that we have, we've actually you know made this leap it's so easy to say later when things are better but now we're, we're doing this and i'm cold but i don't care uh, my fingers are, are numb to the bone but well, I, I kind of care about that. We still had a few more days of our instructor's help getting the boat up to shape for cruising and learning how to troubleshoot things on our own. Doesn't it feel good to personalize the boat, Will? It feels beautiful. Well, I just like having someone I can ask these stupid questions to. <laughs> There's no such thing as a stupid question, especially when you're learning something new. But from this point forward, we are free to sail whenever we want, wherever we want, within reason, of course. Avalon and Largo, bring your glasses up. I'll hold yours, Will. Our final toast. Thank you, Brad, Cheers. for coming. I hope we weren't too crazy. I did yours if you want yours. Cheers. Not at all. Thank you for trusting coming to hang out with our crazy American family. Under COVID. Under COVID. I think, yeah. I think we're quieter than we normally are just because we're learning, though. Don't you think, Will? We're doing the best we can. Yeah. <laughs> the best behavior. Sometimes we're a little much, but I think because we're learning and we're, this is so foreign to us, like we were much quieter than I think we normally are. Would you guys agree? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You guys are too busy focusing. Yeah. I was fine, though. Oh, my gosh. We have now, we're officially certified. We, we could, did it. We can leave the dock on our own. You know what this means? Now what? No more marina vlogs. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So going from today, we have exactly, what, like a month until we're ready to take off from where we're at now. So we have a lot of work to do. We're <laughs> free! <laughs> we're free, we're free, we're free. Oh my gosh, you know what we're free of? We're free of having a roommate in our bed. You get your cabin back. Largo's been sleeping with us for like the last week and a half. <laughs> so Largo, you get to go back into your bed tomorrow when Brad leaves. Listen, we are done. We thank you guys for joining us on our World Towny expedition as we learn to sail. We have a lot of repairs to do on this boat. There's a lot of things that our instructor said we have to do. Our so next, do you think our next vlog is going to be us just doing repairs? I think it should be us sort of doing the things that we should have done since we got the boat, which we haven't done. We're, we're very bad. <laughs> we will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you. Tell me what you're feeling right now. I wish I had more tools. Oh, God, my skin is so dry. Oh, I can't wait to get to the Caribbean. I think you have mine on and yeah, cause yours you may is, want to put on that one instead. Yours is going up your butt and I don't like that. Um, your nautical terms are exemplary. I, I know, well, they'll come. You know what I'm saying, They're, they'll get there. Hold on, don't tell you Largo. You're the, only one, you're, the, you're the only one that's making mom look good right now by holding on tight. You know what would taste really good right now? Um, egg McMuffin from McDonald's. Oh my gosh, I thought, I thought you were going to say Bailey's. <laughs> Bailey's. <laughs>